The Steam Deck is clearly an amazing device for modern games, but it is also something of an emulation powerhouse as well. Now you've probably heard of EmuDeck by now. It's an application to help you set up various emulators. I haven't actually properly used it before today, and mainly because I don't do a lot of emulation myself. I mostly cover and play modern games. However, EmuDeck has a massive 2.0 update out now, so I thought it was a good time to dive in. And hopefully for those of you who haven't actually heard of it or used it, maybe you'll find this shout out interesting. The 2.0 update brought with it a brand new user interface, making it easier to use than ever before. There is also a quick settings option, so you don't need to reinstall to apply customizations. You can back up saves to the cloud. There are new emulators, performance improvements, and they've completely revamped controllers and hotkeys. So with that in mind, it should be easier than ever to get it set up and working, so I'm going to give it a go. I'll stress that this is not a guide video, I just wanted to take a look and I'm bringing you along for the ride. For EmuDeck, there is no flat pack available, so you won't find it in the Discover Store. You need to download it directly from the website. Once you do have it downloaded, in your file manager, go into your downloads, double click the EmuDeck file and tell it to run. It might give you a couple of warnings, but just go through, tell it to execute the file, and then it will bring up a terminal window where it will automatically download what it needs, and then it will launch the EmuDeck app directly for you. For the purpose of this video, I'll quickly breeze through the custom option for the installation so you can see what to expect from it. This is where you can tweak various options as you go through for different types of systems, and you can even set up retro achievements for it if you wish as well. So as you scroll through, you get the option to enable bezels, you can configure the aspect ratio that you desire for various systems, and naturally I'm just speeding up this bit so you don't get bored. But it is all pretty straightforward. Once done, you will then see that you have an emulation folder on whatever drive you picked, and inside folders to place ROM files for each individual system that you're going to be emulating, so place your games in each one. And there's also a BIOS folder for those emulators that need one, so you need to just place that in there. Perhaps the most confusing part will be Steam ROM Manager, which asks you to launch after you install, and you can also access it again by the new EmuDeck desktop shortcut, and then it's available in the Tools menu from the bottom when it loads up. The problem with Steam ROM Manager is the interface is a little bit overwhelming, but it's actually surprisingly easy to get going with. The left list controls what shows up in Steam directly, and you probably don't want everything, so toggle it off at the top, and then select exactly what you do want to show up. Here what I'm doing is I'm selecting Emulation Station, so that I have one place for everything. Plus for the video, I'm picking the PlayStation 1 Emulator Duck Station, so it will show a game I picked called Silent Bomber, which will then appear directly in my Steam library. And I'm also picking emulators directly as well, so that I can go into each emulator and to show you the fancy artwork as well. When you've picked what you want, just go to preview at the top and then the generate button at the bottom. This will scan over what you selected and assign the fancy artwork if it finds it. And when I scroll down, you will see the game Silent Bomber detected from my PlayStation ROM as I did pick it to show PlayStation titles individually. Once you're happy with those icons, hit the green save app list button and you're done. You can go back into gaming mode, head to your Steam library, over to the non-Steam section where it will show everything. So here I can go into Emulation Station to see the individual games. I don't know why it doubled up, but I'll figure that out later. Then I can go directly into an emulator like Duck Station for the PlayStation 1 to see the whole interface. And finally, because I selected it, I can launch my emulated PlayStation 1 game, Silent Bomber, directly from my Steam library. Although, as a note, don't forget to set your Steam input configuration, which EmuDeck, again, provides everything you need. Soon enough, though, you will be well on your way to a whole new world of emulated games on the Steam Deck, thanks to the amazing work from the EmuDeck team, and the people behind all the emulators directly. And once again, I fear completely for my free time because there are a lot of seriously amazing older games you should check out from various classic systems. 
And they really do work astonishingly well on the Steam Deck, both in handheld and docked mode. And EmuDeck really makes it as easy as a few clicks through their interface, dropping your ROM files around, and there you are playing Silent Bomber like me here. And it would give you a good five hours gameplay on a classic PlayStation title, and probably more if I did some small tweaks. I am really happy that EmuDeck exists. It really does make it easy. So I hope you found that interesting. Just a little shout out there for the EmuDeck team because they are doing some great work. And it really is surprisingly easy to get going with tons of emulators on the Steam Deck thanks to this. See you all later.